Katharina Dom. She's a social worker at European Dom, which she co-founded with Iveta Bangova in Bradford, England, assisting Roma from the EU with Brexit-related legal issues. Studying in her native Slovakia, she earned a master's degree in applied social work and a bachelor's degree in social work with the Roma community. She runs sessions to support Roma women, aiming to overcome social isolation, improve their mental health, parenting skills, language, and employability. She is also involved in promoting Roma culture and the contribution of Roma to society. Katarina, we have heard about the terrible measures taken against the Roma community during the corona pandemic. Whole Roma settlements were quarantined. There was considerable violence against Roma, including children, by the police. What exactly was going on there? And is the situation better now? Or do you see this as an example of a general problem in Slovakia? I mean, we are neighbors. I'm from Vienna, from Austria, and then heard a lot of stuff, but from in this question, well, to be honest, uh, in Slovakia, I don't think something changed since uh, it, uh, I don't know, it's a really long, long time since uh, assimilation. It's still a really big issues uh, with discrimination, prejudice, and uh, yeah, with the police, it's still a huge problem. Because all our Roma, yeah, people who is living, I cannot say all, but most of them, uh, who is living in uh, Slovakia, they got a problem with police and violence as well. Uh, it's like, oh, you did something wrong, police just come. Uh, I can remember it was from my town as well. Uh, police just came and uh, they took the boys because they had a fight or they steal something from the shop. They took them, you know, just on the side road, they beat them up and then brought, uh, they just left them there and they just walked home, yeah, it was like two miles maybe, and they walked home, and they've been beaten up, but nobody did anything, because it was police, they couldn't do anything, and it's still there. But, you Horrible. know, Roma voices are not really strong if they are not together. If it's only me who will fight for them, I cannot do anything, it must be all of us. Yes, this is true. Um, and I mean, I asked also uh, Isabella, but how is the situation of Roma refugees in Ukraine in Slovakia? Are a lot of refugees staying there? Uh, I'm not living in Slovakia like 12 years now, uh, nearly 13 years, yeah, I'm living in UK. Then uh, I cannot properly answer the question, just only from the news and maybe from my friends who is living in Slovakia. Or, but, I mean, what are, are telling the Roma organizations there or the NGOs? Uh, what we can say is like, uh, you know, discrimination is there. If it's a refugee from Ukraine but uh, non-Roma, they can have help, mm -hmm. but if it's Roma, they just said, oh, sorry, I cannot help you. And uh, it's like, because uh, you are Roma, even if you are from Ukraine, Poland, anywhere, in Slovakia, it's still like, you are Roma, and even you got master degree or PhD or something like that, it's really hard to achieve something, something and uh, fight against them, against Gadget, because it's really hard, really. I had a master degree, and when I applied for a job, uh, it was uh, social work, work with Roma communities. But uh, they hired, yeah, some, uh, she had just A level as a chef. But she was white, and I was Roma. Even I had a master degree, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, Slovakia has been in the EU for almost 20 years. Uh, do you see any progress when it comes to the situation of the Roma in general? Or has the situation even worsened? Since uh, we joined EU, 
I think it was progress for Roma only because they can free movement, yeah? They can move from Slovakia. It was only the best thing, I think. Because uh, living in Slovakia is not only huge poverty, no jobs or really low paid jobs. It's at all, actually it's at all post-communist country. It's same situation, it's not different like Slovakia, Czech, yeah. And uh, yeah, I think only this one, it was progress that we could move away. And did a lot of Roma move away from Slovakia? Oh yes. Definitely, after we joined EU, it was a huge migration to the uh, to UK, UK or yeah. other countries. Yeah, uh, but most of them they moved to UK, as I heard. Is it true? Oh, yeah, as we know, it's a lot of uh, yeah in uh, in UK. Yeah, but we do not have statistic because uh, actually we live in Bradford. Even they cancel. They don't have any statistic how many Roma live in UK. They said it's between 600 and 25,000. It's 6,000 till 25, which is a huge gap. We cannot say how many. Because the Roma, they don't that identify uh, they them don't, as uh, a Roma? Yeah, they don't identify. They say they are Slovakian. Yeah, because of, you know, because you don't want to have stamp. Yeah. I'm Roma because it came from, yeah, like we have been taken to the uh, yeah, concentration camps and those. And uh, also, it's because a huge fear, I think. Yeah, if you say, I'm Roma, you cannot say that proudly and without fear anywhere. Yeah, not even in the UK. Um, I mean, to come to the UK, what is the situation of Roma migrant workers after Brexit? Can they still work in England? Problem after Brexit, actually, it, was, uh, it is a really huge one. Because we still have families who are coming to UK uh, and they said, oh, I just sold my house and I came to UK, I did not have any job there and I would like to live here. And it's a lady, a family of six children and the parents and I really, I cannot help them. Because it's too late, it's after Brexit, it's after deadlines, we cannot apply for any status. It's not possible. And there are a lot of families that suffer under these conditions? Uh, yeah, it, they can apply for some status, yeah, they can join the family, but it must be only children under 21, because if our children over 21, then it's really hard to show dependency on parents. You have to prove like, uh, yes, uh, bank statement that your parents sending you money, but it's not everything because you need to prove like, explain why you are dependent on your parents. You are young, you are maybe 25 years old, and you have to show like, are you poly, are you, do you have any mental health issues or something like this? Like, you need to prove why you are dependent on your family. It's also a possibility like parents can apply for, uh, for status through children. It's a little bit easier because parents are older, uh, yeah, mostly then uh, it's easier way, but still show dependency. Otherwise, no, uh, any other option is not. Wow, this is hard. So you would never go back to Slovakia, I guess? Uh, I don't think so, no. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look like that. Thank you very much, Katarina. <clears throat> Iveta Bangova. She has a degree in health and social care and also one year international relationships. When she moved to the UK, she worked in a food factory as quality control, as an interpreter and support workers from Eastern European communities since 2011. In Bradford, Diveta worked alongside children's services and is trying to avoid removing children from Roma families and teaches English language and improves employability in West Yorkshire. Together with Katarina Dom, she created European Drum to help Roma. They aim to improve their health, mental health, sexual health, their family life, parenting support, their employability, digital skills, language skills, access to welfare benefits, and, it, and also promote the Roma culture. Um, for years, 
Romnia were forcibly sterilized in Czech Republic. Now it has been decided that these women should receive compensation. How did this law come, come about? Do you consider it um, as a success, success and have there been any compensation payments? Till uh, now? I would say I'm very appreciated to be here and I think more Roma professionals should be here. It's not enough here at all, yeah. you know. But I'm happy to be here. And also about the uh, sterilization of women in Czech Republic. It wasn't only in Czech Republic, it was in Slovakian as well. I think there is not enough uh, cases who, s who identify themselves, they have been uh, sterilized because they didn't say that to anyone, you know? And there was some payments, I do remember, because that happened after 90, 1990, something like that. And there was some payments for women, because they cannot have a children, you know? But that's not like, uh, not enough. There was more women, and they didn't know they will be sterilized. They went to the labor, they gave him anesthesia, and they, woke up and they can't, cannot have children. You know, they made this without their decision. They didn't sign any paper. That's why they received compensation, yeah. but not all of them, only like a, a little amount of women. But do the women know that they were sterilized? I mean, a lot of them did They know found about out after, afterward. After how many years or? After, I don't know, after an operation, they've told them when it was already done. You know, they did an operation, and after when they, like, woke up, they basically found out they are sterilized. This is was a huge problem in Czech Republic. When this came out, you know, everybody was surprised and shocked. But they did know what they doing. It was like government, doctors, everything, the big network to stop Roma women to have more and more children. It's a huge problem. It was a huge problem, but it stopped now. They stopped to sterilize the women, and how was, I mean, the compensation, how this went on? Who said that? Who said that? Uh, and who did let them know it was sterilized without permission? They received compensation. But to be honest, my opinion is Roma women is not enough educated to do that, you know? Yeah. And they keep keep like uh, keep that as a secret it's not everybody like more educated ladies they did that but not everybody not every woman get the compensation because they're not uh, yeah. Yeah, educated to know how they to didn't get care this about it they didn't care about it there's more important things for them to do than like uh, ask for compensation oh wow when uh, when did they stop this I think when they found out, it was like uh, around 2000, 2001. It's went on for nearly 10 years after maybe more. I'm not quite sure, to be honest. I've got no data because they're not keeping track of this. They keep hiding it. I don't know. But they really stopped it. They didn't yeah, they yeah, they do did. it anymore. They did. Yeah. I okay. hope so. I'm not living there for nearly yeah, for we 15 never know. years. You never know with the guys. Yeah. yeah, some of them. Uh, now you live in England. And what is the situation of migrant Roma there? Do long-term traumas caused by systemic discrimination play a role? And uh, what are the biggest problems of uh, migrant trauma in England? You know, in Czech Republic, in Slovakia and other countries, we went, uh, we moved from that country because we were discriminated for, for race, for being Roma. Because in, in Czech Republic or Slovakia, maybe in Poland, I'm not sure, it's like basically we were discriminated for race, for skin color, we were called black and everything. But in England, it's kind of different, different discrimination. We are not discriminated for skin color because people, same, same skin color, discriminated us for being Roma for being Slovakian, for being Czech. You know, pa Asian community like Pakistani and others, like Bradford is popular because it's like, a, uh, it's multicultural and it's also Pakistani. Asian, Asian community is there most likely. And they 
they basically discriminating Roma because of language, because of coming from uh, Czech Republic, from Slovakia, and they calling them Czecho. Is the word when uh, my daughter goes to secondary school and she said to them she's identified Roma and she's from Czech Republic. They started calling the calling her Czecho because she is from Czech, Re Czech Republic, you know. She was born there. And that's like it makes me feel it's not kind of discrimination, it's the same, it's different. They discriminating people for different things. It's not about skin colour or anything like that. It's about uh, being Roma and where you come from. Wow, this is very bad. It uh, is. <clears throat> how uh, is I mean how does the political migrant workers work there with these people? Is there any work? between communities? Uh, there is not enough organization to stand up for Roma, because in England, I've got a feeling we've got huge Roma community. You know, most of the population moved to the UK, but there is like uh, not a lot of, lot of professionals in the position. There is no, no, nobody in government. There is nobody in city councils. There is nobody in doctor's positions. You know, I mean, not a lot of professionals to stand up to, to like, a, our voice needs to be heard. But how can be heard if we're not educated, if we're not going to get education, we're not going to move anywhere. For our children, it's education. It's most important, you know, to get them to be professionals. If Gaja can be professionals, we can be as well. We have a chance, and especially in England, in England, they have a big chance, our children, they have a big chance to be whatever they want to be. Because it's easier. You know, it's a lot easier. But a lot of Roma, they take the chance, I mean, in the UK to go to school, to university, they, to educate their, themselves. So I think this changed also a lot after years, and it will change. Yeah, but can you see how our, ch our children are talented, they can be educated, because since they moved to the UK, we've got lawyer, we've got a uh, doctor, we've got everyone in every position, our children can stand up for our, you know, for our community. But in Czech or Slovakian, you can be whatever, you can have a whatever degree, you can study at in Oxford University, you never be anything, yeah. because you are discriminated for being Roma. Yeah, you so know? in UK, Roma are still discriminated. They but are. The chances are bigger and better for Roma because yeah, yeah, if they they're have more a, migrants. If they the would UK. like to take a chance, because yeah. some of them, it's traditional thing. They not, they are not like uh, encouraging, supporting children in education. And after secondary school, they they don't do nothing. Basically, they need more support, more encouraging, more, more good examples from Roma, more good examples, you know, because our children, they are not like uh, motivated. Because when you're, gonna, when you're gonna show them, this is the cup of water, you know, you can fill this cup with water, they will do it because you did it. But if you're not do gonna show them, they will not do it, never ever. We need role models, we need examples in our communities. Yeah, to be someone in front of our children. This is very right, yeah. Um, in the EU, refugees from Ukraine have a better legal res residence situation than many Roma who fled the Yugoslav wars and still live in highly precarious situations. What is it like in England? How are Ukrainian refugees treated there? And do they have a better status than Roma refugees from the Balkans? Uh, you know, after Brexit, Ukraine, they, they couldn't enter the country. But because of war, Ukraine and Russia, they let people to enter the country. But I think it's under special rules. It's not everybody can enter the country. But needs to be, I've got, it, I've got a feeling, it's need, yeah, some refugees, they can enter the country when they're in danger in their country. But after Brexit, it's not any good to enter the UK for anyone from the EU, to be honest. Because it's not give them a better chance for living. If you haven't been in the UK before 2020, you have no chance to uh, get settlement, settled status. You get pre-settled status. With pre-settled status, that means you have a status for five years. You're not eligible for anything. 
It's hard work, it's hard situation, and children, you know, and family, they are not getting enough money because everything is changed. Uh, before, it used to be weekly money for children, and you get paid as much as you had the children. But now, you get universal credit, and they pay only for first three children. When mother with eight children and husband enter the country, they will receive, let me say, 1,500 pounds, that's not enough for living for eight children for food. No. You know, that's why they made a Brexit, because they would like to stop people entering the country. Yes, people that really need help in this uh, case and in this situation. Thank you very much, Iveta. Thank you for being here. You're welcome.